Welcome to our 5 on 5. We're pleased to be joined by Dr. Kent Dodderman from Southern Oregon Cardiology. Doc, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Craig. Right. So let's start with, with the heart, of course, is what we're talking about here today. Uh, is there a new technology in cardiology that we need to be aware of? There, there's a lot of new technology that has just come out recently or is going to come out here in the near future. Some of the things that come to mind are um, something called the Impella device for a patient who has a failing heart. So, for instance, there are some patients who come in with heart attacks. A heart attack is when there's a damage to a portion of the heart. Some people have a failing heart as a result, mm. and we're able to actually place a device in the femoral artery that we take it in up the, the leg, aorta right? yeah. in the leg. So wow. the access point, it's just an access point in the leg, gives us access to the arteries of the body. We can take the device up the aorta, place it across the aortic valve in the heart, and it acts like a pump. It pulls blood out of the heart, out into the aorta, and it allows us to work on a person's coronary arteries to hopefully help get them through their heart attack or the time when their heart's failing to get them better so they can make a recovery. So that's one mm. nice bit of technology. It's not for everybody, it's not for all situations, but that's been very useful this past year. Some other nice um, uh, technology advances are, um, there's a new device called the Lariat for the ranchers out there. It's a device where you yeah. lasso a portion of the heart. It's used in patients who have atrial fibrillation, which about 10% of people over the age of 65 have. And the problem with atrial fibrillation is it accounts for about 30% of all strokes. Wow. And what atrial fibrillation is, is there's a portion of the heart called the atrium, two heart chambers, where the electrical circuits short out. So you go from nice organized electrical activity to, to chaotic electrical activity, and there's a portion of the heart that instead of going like this, is just going like that. And the blood okay. can stagnate, the blood clots, and it can travel out of the heart and cause a stroke. Usual therapies for that are what we call blood thinners, like warfarin or Coumadin. There's some other new ones out there. Problem with those medicines is they're not 100% effective at preventing stroke. They also are not a. They also there's an increased risk of bleeding, and not everybody can tolerate them. So there's some new devices out there, in particular the Lariat, where one of the physicians can make a place a little device into the pericardium, into the sac around the heart. Mm -hmm. They can go up and lasso a portion of the heart. There's an appendage of the heart called the left atrial appendage. They can put a little loop around that heart, cinch it up, and occlude off that portion of the heart, which often causes these clots. Mm -hmm. Go home the same day or the next day, typically. Wow. So that's a nice technological advance. It's not mm -hmm. for everybody with atrial fibrillation. You have to have failed warfarin, but there, that's mm -hmm. that's... Right on Options the immediate horizon. There. That's going to be here this month or wow. in March. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, we're going to take a quick break. We'll have much more talking about your heart this Valentine's Day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our 5 on 5. We're going to hear with Dr. Kent Dodderman talking to Southern Oregon cardiologist. So what are some tips for a healthy heart? Well, preventive cardiology, not the sexiest, funnest things to be doing, but some key things to know about um, heart disease. Number one, 38% of us will die of heart disease. Number two on the list is all forms of cancer put together. So very important to do. Wow. Um, the most likely thing to kill any of us with heart disease is coronary artery disease or heart attack. And that's also known as myocardial infarction and is typically due to a blocked coronary artery. These coronary arteries are only one eighth of an inch in diameter. Their only job is to bring blood to the heart muscle, similar to the fuel lines of a car engine. Problem is, as we get older, we can develop atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, cholesterol plaque, whatever you want to call it, it's the same process. And basically, as we get older, the way we get this plaque in our arteries is we injure our arteries through different things. Smoking is a classic one. Mm -hmm. um, diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, if we add too much salt to your food. If you have a salt shaker in your hand out there, put it down. Yeah. Um, if, you have <laughs> high, if you have high cholesterol, Certain family history, people who have genetics sure. for developing it. What you eat, sausage, biscuits, and gravy, regular ice cream, cheese. If it tastes good, you're listing all my favorite stock. This I is know, bad. I know. <laughs> Fruits and vegetables are great, all that. And then, uh, and then the other thing is, you know, does a person exercise? So if you exercise, um, if you eat right, if you can make sure your blood pressure is checked at least once or twice a year, make sure your cholesterol is checked, don't smoke, do all those things. There's a lot of healing that goes on. The, the chance that you injure your arteries is much lower. If you eat sausage, biscuits, and gravy, smoke, have high blood pressure, and don't take care of your cholesterol and don't exercise, there's a lot of injury going on without question. If there's a lot of injury, then you get this atherosclerosis, this plaque buildup in your arteries, and that can lead to heart attack. Mm -hmm. I know uh, off the cuff of the question here, you're just talking about food and all that. Uh, we hear wine 
you know, in small amounts, moderation, that yeah. kind of thing. Is, is that good for your blood? Yeah, it's felt, you know, a glass of wine is good for you, a glass of red wine. Uh -huh. um, is red, white, does it matter? If you're, a bottle, if you're drinking a bottle yeah. a day, it's too that's much. Injury, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, and actually you can injure your heart muscle with too much alcohol, mm -hmm. just like your liver. You can injure your liver and your heart. But a glass of wine's fine, glass of grape juice, those, are, those things are fine. <laughs> Very nice, Doc. Great to meet you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. All right, you. stay with us. We'll be right back. And the last part.